Welcome to the 359. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Alfred Ng. Yes, it's time again for Amazon's Prime Day, the annual shopping bonanza that this year will include over one million deals worldwide. It's so exciting. Um, Alfred, do you ever buy anything on Prime Day? Um, I mostly buy useless stuff on Prime Day. Last year I bought a cot. It was half off. It was like a half off cot. Um, okay. I don't know why I don't use it anymore. Um, and then I think the year before that, I bought a cat tree for like 30 bucks. Oh, that's, that's a pretty good price yeah, for a my cat cats, tree. Yeah, my cats really like that cat tree. Also, it's like $80 like when it's not on sale. So There are some good deals on Prime Day. There are also some stupid deals on Prime Day. Yeah. You can just rest assured that there are going to be a lot of deals, and I'm sure people are going to be really excited about it. Uh, some, one of the new things that's going to be happening this year is, is that I know you're going to love hearing about this. Amazon is planning on making Prime Day more of like an experience. So they had uh, like a live streamed concert with Ariana Grande last year. And they told me without many details, obviously, uh, to expect a lot more entertainment stuff because it's not just for shopping. It's, you know, we're celebrating our prime it. members. I hate it when brands do that. Like, look, we don't care about you as a company or as an experience. Like people come to Prime Day or Amazon at least for like deals. The deals. Like yeah. give me cheap stuff. I'm not here to like see like how cool Amazon is as a brand. Like, wow, they got Millie Vanilli to do a live stream concert. <laughs> like get out of here. Like <laughs> Like, I feel like they look at Prime Day as if it's going to be, like, the next, like, Christmas or Fourth of July or something. They're where basically, like, that's exactly what like, they're doing. It's, it's it's a Prime Day tradition, <laughs> and it's like, no, get out of here. We just want cheap stuff. We like, just that's wanna... literally it. You don't, you're not a person to me. You don't matter to me. I don't care that there's a person behind that screen. You are a company, and I just want cheap stuff from you. I like this. I like this part of Alfred. And we look forward to doing a lot more of this type of Prime Day coverage. So look out for that. Uh, we want to get to our next story. Cybersecurity for firm, Cyber Reason. Reason. Cyber, Cyber Reason. Reason? Yes. Cyber Reason. That's a terrible name. Said it uncovered a vast hacking operation in which hackers infiltrated multiple mobile carriers for years. They even had the ability to shut down communications at a moment's notice. How did this happen? Yeah, so they had hacked more than a dozen mobile carriers in the Middle East, Africa, uh, Asia, and Europe. Not the United States. No, there has been no activity in North America that they discovered, which doesn't mean that they're not in like the network. It's just that they haven't found it. Um, but yeah, so they basically hacked them through uh, either these companies had a public-facing server that had no password on it, which seems to happen a lot, or they fished an employee who just happened to cling on any link, link that pops up in their inbox. Pretty pretty typical uh, hacker tools there. Yeah, yeah. so it's not anything like really crazy, but the sophisticated part is about, is about how they spread. So once they were in the network, it was basically, all right, how many computers does this login have access to? Oh, this many computers? Okay, so then let's access all those computers. And then from there... Once they have access to those computers, it wow. like continues like breaking down like a really bad pyramid scheme. Um, but essentially, they do all that until they get escalated privileges, which then they create accounts for themselves, um, basically posing as like the IT team online. This is crazy. Yeah, so they they worked as kind of this like shadow IT team uh, within these <laughs> mobile carriers. Uh, which gave them a lot of privileges. Like they were able to shut down the the network like communications if they wanted to. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know from what your perspective is, the focus of this attack was more about espionage rather than disruption. So they wanted to be in the network and steal information from sp specific people. So they mm. had access to hundreds of millions of people's records, but they chose to only like download gigabytes of data on like targeted individuals, like less than a hundred people. That's pretty wild. Um, this sounds like a government was behind it. Yeah, so it's suspected to be the Chinese government, even Shocked. because it's all the all the hacking tools are you know what the Chinese government has used, same methods, same kind of like think like philosophy of you know stay there quietly and steal as much information as you can. And but, they like, did not it make effectively. Any noise. Um, but the thing is, is that you know this could also be a government like 
entity trying to look like frame the Chinese government on this. Like attribution is extremely hard in cybersecurity. So it's still unclear, but you know, all signs right now do uh, point to China on this. So uh, we're out of time, but I did want to mention one quick story. The head of Instagram confirmed that his social network has no policy on deep fake videos. Deep fakes is obviously an area that we've been focusing on a lot at CNET. So it's interesting to see that Instagram doesn't even have a policy yet about it, but we'll see if they end up getting one in the future, they're still trying to balance what they say, the difference between uh, safety and speech. Uh, either way, if you want to read more about these stories, check them out on CNET. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Alfred Ng. Thanks for listening. Thanks, everybody, for joining us for the recording of the audio podcast here on the live stream where you can come see what happens behind the curtain at CNET every weekday morning. We want to remind you before we start jumping into the chat to take your questions and comments that tomorrow is our last day on this channel. No, the show's not going away, except we are getting a new channel, which if I was smart enough, I'd have ready to show you. Here it is. You can go to this link and in the description below, tiny.cc slash daily charge. It's our brand new soul alone YouTube channel that CNET has gifted us because they like us so much. They want us to have our own vehicle to make the show thrive. So we hope that you're going to go and join us there starting on July 1st. But again, tomorrow is our last 359 show here on CNET YouTube proper. And we'll see you over on Daily Charge YouTube starting on July 1st. That's next Monday. And uh, in the meantime, go ahead and send in your questions and comments. As always, the show remains the same. We love to get Q&A from you guys on the relevant topics at hand during the day's show. Uh, and right out the gate, let's go ahead and take a comment from Ryan, our old friend Ryan. He says, I agree with Alfred. I want cheap stuff. I don't care about the rest when it comes to Prime Day. Uh, but I want to hear if anybody out there does give a crap about all the bells and whistles that uh, Amazon has uh, put on Prime Day. What do you guys think? Companies should stop trying to be people, all right? I'm tired of Netflix and all these like Burger King and Wendy's on Twitter acting like they're like fun and quirky and they're your buddies, all right? They're just a company. They provide a service. Don't try to be my friend. Uh, don't try to be cool. Just give me a burger or give me cheap stuff. I don't care about you as a company. You're not a person. Never talk to me. Or my son again. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, look, I generally agree with what Alfred said, but in the interest of being devil's advocate, I'm going to pose two reasons why Amazon would do this. One of them is you pay $120 a year to get Amazon Prime. <clears throat> Most of the time, that's for the unlimited shipping. Some people watch Prime Video, some don't, whatever. Uh, so they're trying to use Prime Day as this conduit to get you to keep signing up or to get new people to sign up. So if we've got like a free live stream concert from Millie Vanilli, sure, that's another perk that we can point to. The other thing, which I, I mentioned in my story, is, is that so much of the tech industry coverage these days is negative. Uh, to, we're constantly talking yeah, about privacy the concerns. Yeah, are bad. I'm not <laughs> disputing that in the slightest. I'm just saying from the perspective of PR from these companies – talking about monopolistic practices. We're going to break up these companies. They're, they're, they're taking too much of our data, all this stuff. What a great opportunity for Amazon to now point to the positives of the company. Here's the reasons why people actually like made uh, Amazon like a successful company in the first place. You're making such a face about this. Yeah, but. yeah, I am. Because what the hell are you talking about? I told about, you, man? I was playing devil's okay, advocate. Like. All right, all these all these like hits that these companies have been taking are on privacy issues, uh, lack of security, um, monopolistic concerns, right? How the hell is a, a free concert live streamed on it supposed to kind of subvert that? It's yeah, at the people, very least a band aid, but people, at the same time, really like, gonna, hey, let's people focus. are really going to forget that that uh, no, they're not going to forget about it. A company is selling uh, surveillance to to police, and and the the way that they forget totally. about it is. Oh, cool. Like, there's a free concert going on here. There are popular elements of Amazon. There's a reason why the company got as big as it did, because it does provide services that people like. If they're able to at least focus attention yeah. for a day or two on those things, that is so but clearly a reason to do that. Don't you think that the focus attention should be on those things, though, that you were talking about, like the cheap deals and yeah. fast shipping? Like, that, those are reasons why, like, I have Amazon Prime. Like, it's cheap. I get it in two days. Um, 
the customer service is pretty damn good. Like if it yeah. arrives broken or something, it's not like a random seller on eBay where it's like, well, sucks to be you. <laughs> um, I've, I've don't you dealt with that too. I'm just saying, like, yeah. don't you think the focus should be on that? that not something those, completely like, don't try to affect culture here, Amazon. You're a store. Yeah. No, I, 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 as I was going into this, I was saying I generally agree with like 90 percent of what you're saying, uh, but I did want to provide like another perspective here. And um, I, I think I agree that a lot of Prime Day should focus on getting you cheap stuff fast, uh, that kind of thing. But if they do want to provide people with some extra freebies that they are interested in as far as like a concert or whatever, some people would be into that, I guess. I guess they saw what the area Grande Ariana Grande numbers were and decided they weren't going to double down on that. So, yeah. Uh, we anyway, are, I'm I'm really digging your fire about this. I'm I'm pretty into Companies it. are lame. Anyway, CNET is a very cool uh, website <laughs> that's <laughs> that's owned by CBS Interactive. Yeah, I, I, everybody's trying to be something they're not these days. Facebook is trying to be the ultimate connection tool. Amazon thinks it's ingrained in culture. Facebook just invented money. Come that's on, true. that's what Facebook's trying to do. They want to be your bank. It's I annoying. mean, it's just weird, like. You, you say that we shouldn't uh, acknowledge those Twitter accounts or anything like that, but there are people behind those. They're not all just pure bots. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cite the Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter account, which deserves a friggin' award. <laughs> Alfred, back me up. Oh, yeah, it's a very good account. So is the Garfield uh, Twitter. Are yes. those real ones? Yeah, or are like they they're like... verified. Oh, interesting. And of course, the hilarious. Garfield one is kind of like almost being overtaken by I'm sorry, John. So careful there, creepypasta. Okay. <laughs> Have you not seen that? I, I am not following. Let's that. Say I that. have, but I also feel like describing that on the show is going to take like way longer. Well, I'm than not I describing it, it on this show. No one deserves that. Mm. Uh, you guys are okay. way more online than I am. Let's talk about I don't know kids shows that I know about. No. <laughs> Uh, what did anybody score on last year's Prime Day? Just to kind of like drum up our thoughts here. Uh, I actually didn't get anything. I didn't even shop at all. Um, I, did I not have time because you guys kept me so damn busy last year. Zorana says, got cheap fire sticks and echoes last year. That seems to be the case. It's really a garage sale for Amazon to have an excuse to shove more of their branded uh, crap in your pockets. Um, one thing I was kind of curious about, though... Does this actually impact their prime subscribership? Yes. Do they report a decent uptick in They always say, they always say that they get a nice uptick or they said that this is the best day ever for prime membership uh um for new prime memberships, but Amazon being Amazon, they're super secretive and so they 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 provide these superlatives but never actually back them up with numbers in general. Sometimes they do back them up with numbers. The last time Amazon gave like a real figure about Prime, Jeff Bezos, I think it was last year, said that there are more than 100 million Prime members. Uh, and they haven't updated that number since then. So, yeah, Prime Day is another opportunity for them to, to goose that number and get people to keep subscribing. Because um, once you've paid that money, the, it, it creates sunken cost syndrome in which you are more likely to buy stuff from Amazon to try to get the value of that subscription back. So uh, there's this really great uh, research company that found out that um, Prime members spend roughly double what nine Prime members uh, spend on Amazon, which makes perfect sense. So you're already paying for the subscription, and then you're giving them even more money. Yeah, I was going to wait um, to buy a new laptop until like Prime Day, but this was also like two months ago where I just decided like it wasn't worth it and I just bought I just bought it with like my my credit card rewards money so it was yeah. technically yeah. free I don't know If if you're looking for like any Amazon products obviously Prime Day is like a really good day to buy it but it is true from what Brian said that uh, sometimes people complain that the brand name stuff is lacking or sells out too quickly um, they they have in the past years tried to like beef up the inventory mm -hmm. because they know that's been a concern uh, the other thing to remind people is is that the site crashed at the very beginning last year, so they're hoping to avoid that problem. So oh, like they, yeah. they like they like trumpeted it up and like talked it up so much, and then um, they were giving four oh fours to people for a couple hours in the beginning. So 
and and they still ended up having like a wildly successful sale. So, but that was a know. dense failure. That did go on a minute. Do they have any report as to how they're going to avoid that this year? They when when I talked to them, they just said what you would expect them to say, which is we spent a, like we worked super hard. We spent a lot of time trying to make sure that this wouldn't uh, uh, like this wouldn't happen again. You can imagine they get a ton of volume. They get a ton of traffic on um cyber monday on black friday whatever so it, it, and and they also control one of the biggest cloud computing operations in the world with aws so um it stands to reason they should be able to uh keep their website functioning for something like this i would anticipate this isn't going to repeat itself but uh we'll see <laughs> All right, here's a really good question from Yan Hao Chan. He says, where I live, Alibaba Singles Day is much more popular. Have you guys tried Singles Day before? No. I mean, uh, I've I'm heard about an, it. Yeah, I'm not a, uh, an Alibaba user. It's it's I, like several times bigger, apparently, yeah. than Prime Day. And that's kind of like, that was like the forefather of Prime Day. Yeah, but how many concerts do they have for free? I don't <laughs> know. For the single people. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, do you guys have Ariana Grande? I don't know. So can you guys actually rank this for us? I'm curious uh, in the scale of Singles Day, Prime Day, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, which one really is the uh, the, the greatest sales numbers across the board? Is it still Black Friday or has that been dethroned? No, no yeah, I believe... Black Friday's dropped for a while. I believe, okay, globally, I believe Singles Day or Cyber Monday are the are the biggest. And I think that it's Singles Day. I can tell you from Amazon's perspective, usually Prime Day breaks the single day record the day it happens <clears throat> and then that gets broken again on cyber monday so what that means is on any given year the best sales day in history for amazon because the company is still growing really really quickly is usually cyber monday then prime day then black friday and that's specifically for Amazon. In general, for most retailers, it's Cyber Monday, Black Friday, and then whatever else, like usually around the holidays. Uh, so, but it, like, but I don't track the Chinese market as closely. So I, I just know single day is like some of their numbers are like absolutely insane. And they're like several multiples more than the United States sometimes. How does it compare to the Sleepy's um, President's Day sale? <laughs> yeah. Sleepy's President's Day sale actually does better than Singles Day somehow because like their deals are incredible. Yeah, the concerts know? there are insane. <laughs> their Twitter feed is really, really <laughs> clever. And that's how they get people to show up. <laughs> Here's a little more from Yen. This is actually a really, really great question I wanted uh, to touch on. He asks, if we see Amazon moving more from a retailer to marketing services, and he cites in an example that Alibaba and other e-commerce platforms like Grab or Gojek in Southeast Asia, you can order a personal haircut. How does that work? Do they come to your house? Yeah, they Amazon does have a platform called Amazon. I think it's Amazon Home Services or Amazon Services where you can get like a plumber or somebody to come over to build your IKEA furniture. That already exists. They they kind of have a version of TaskRabbit already. I, I don't really think that it's like a huge business for them, but um, yeah, they like they see an opportunity to continue growing with services because obviously they've already. Uh, flooded the market with product sales. Like they're already about 60% uh, of the U.S. online retail. So <clears throat> that's a great opportunity for them to expand. I mean, I'll say this too. Uh, Alibaba is like much more poised to, to, you know, be a part of like a services culture more than Amazon is at least. Like they have Alipay, which is mm -hmm. I think more popular than PayPal now. They obviously have their like Alibaba, uh, the AliExpress website, um, yeah, they they have a lot more like services available to them than Amazon currently does. They're yeah, I mean they're doing extremely well, Alibaba. Yeah. And as far as um, anybody that could really hold a candle to Amazon online, Alibaba is probably one of the only ones. JD.com is probably one of the only, one of the other ones that's worth mentioning. Mm -hmm. um, they're also in China. So uh, Flipkart. They were a big deal. Now they're under Walmart. Uh, that that one's in uh, India. Um, oh, Jet Day. Jet Day? Yeah, I don't know. 
but but anyway, those are the Asian markets. I, I I like have a glancing knowledge of the Asian markets, but I don't know nearly as much about them than the U.S. market. All right, we're closing in on the end here. Uh, I wanted I thought about asking a little bit more about the hack, um, but. Honestly, I feel, Alfred, like you did a really good job explaining that. Now I have to watch it like seven or eight times to actually understand what you said, but it's there. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the deep fakes. Um, Life Improvements has an inter interesting perspective. By the way, Life Improvements, nice to see you back again. Haven't seen you in a while. What's up? Uh, I would think as long as the deep fakes don't dip into the territory of libel and slander, they might be on the same level as memes and not really needing any policies. What are your feelings on that and what truly separates a deep fake from just an innocent meme? Well, yeah, that's the problem with deepfakes, right? And nearly anything on the internet is that as long as it's harmless, it's pretty cool and funny. Um, like, they did that for deepfakes a lot um, with, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And, um, you know, there was an art project with Mark Zuckerberg, which was pretty infamous. Um, Nick Cage. Nick Cage gets used a lot, too. Oh, yeah. And, it, like, yeah, Nick Cage was in a bunch of stuff, and it was pretty damn funny. Um, but, yeah, the problem is, is that, like, they're... That's it's not like when you make a deep fake, like there's some rule out there that's like you can only use this for jokes. Like, yeah, the same way like things are photoshopped all the time in disinformation campaigns. It's it's a growing problem. And unlike things that are photoshopped, deep fakes, I feel, are much harder to tell the difference. And as computers get stronger, it'll be much easier to make and, you know, much you know more sophisticated. And th that is like the big issue, because now it's kind of like you really don't know what to trust online. Um, there could be a deep fake video of us like from enough photos eventually where it has me saying that I love Amazon uh, Prime Day. Uh, you just did. Yeah, I know, exactly. Right. So that's great fodder for like a deep fake if they wanted to do that. Like, can right. take that without the context. So there but was your, a case... But your context of innocently biting in favor of a product or not is not the same as, say, like a politician having words put in their mouth. Yeah. It's, they, it's, they... it's not like you know, uh, Baldwin doing his Trump impression and somebody saying that Trump said something he didn't and that could be it, dangerous. It, does, it obviously creates a pretty um, <clears throat> complicated situation where a lot of people say, like, I won't believe it if I don't see it. Uh, and then you see it and it looks pretty credible, whether it's Photoshopped or a deep fake. And it's total BS, like it's not real. And uh, it's, so it's used for a lot of like political like purposes, too. So there's a case out of Malaysia currently where uh, there's like a political aide admitting to like uh, um, like a vi like a sex scandal. But they don't know if it's a deep fake or not, because that's the other issue, too. Like if you can't confirm whether or not something is a deep fake, then even like that's like deniability for somebody. Like if I were caught in a scandal, but the right. video is not that great. Yeah, yeah. I that just is, say, like, Anthony Weiner did that yeah, when Anthony fake. Weiner was caught. Uh, he said that his Twitter was hacked. Which yeah. time? You know, a, a, he wasn't able to paper that over after a while. Yeah, they had it was too much information. Pretty obvious to tell for exactly but it was like deep fakes. So like it offers like a way to just yell at someone. Like, no, that's not me. That's a deep fake. Right. It's like if if like the Shaggy song like. It Re wasn't me. Yeah, like it just like became popular again in 2019, where it's like it was a deep fake. If only. Oh man! Wow. I Throw mean, back to my college days. Well done. From a video perspective, the technology is utterly fascinating, and I wish it could just have been put towards something fun or creative or innocent. I, I mean, I could watch the Nick Cage deep fakes all day. Um, I mean, we cited those. We use those as B-roll in today's segment, just because that's the, the funny ones are the best ones. But yeah, it's it's scary. When you think like someone could have me here on in the context of this show saying something like uh, smash that like button, subscribe and I'm, or I'm whatever, not that guy. something even more troublesome for sure. I, the good news is, is that there are a lot of academics and researchers out there that are basically reverse engineering deep fakes right now or trying to develop better versions of deep fakes to try to figure out how they operate so that they can snuff like sniff them out. So it's not like um, th there aren't efforts on the other side to try to control uh, what's going on or to try to, like, sniff out the situation. And then, yeah, it doesn't even have to be that sophisticated of an edit. I mean, there was the issue with Facebook and the Nancy Pelosi video from a few weeks ago. Where, that wasn't even a deep fake. Yeah, Didn't they, they did, just slow it down? Yeah they, yeah, they slowed it down to make it seem like she had slurred her speech. But it was basically enough to get people thinking, like, wow, like, what is she doing, even though it was clearly an edited video? That's yeah. the state of online like misinformation. I think somebody coined it as a cheap fake. 
because mm. um, it doesn't take that much effort, but it also doesn't take that much effort to trick people online. Yeah. Yeah. The Zuckerberg one, too, like the stuff that he was saying about being like, I don't know, controlling the world. Yeah, that was or whatever. the art project. Yeah. That's yeah. what spurred that whole conversation about with Instagram's uh, head. So that one was not made to like, you know, trick anybody. Yeah, the so experiment they're still was to be... see whether or not Instagram would take it down because it's clearly false information. That's why he said we don't have a policy against deepfakes. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, I guess we'd be okay with those. Those are basically like satire. And like you said, it was an art project. But yeah, other ones, not so much. Before we shut it down for the day, another quick comment coming in from Life Improvement says there's going to start to be a lot of claims for deep fakes. Who was that girl you were out with last night? Oh, that was a deep fake. Uh, how long until that does start to kind of like spin around and people start uh, um, chicken littling uh, deep fakes? Uh, like, oh, that's a deep fake. Actually, that they was already real. are, but I really think that it's. It, it, Look, you can't just do it on your phone right now. It's like that technology is not yet available. Maybe it will be in the future where it's just an app and you can do it really simply. But at the moment, um, it's probably going to be focused on celebrities and politicians. And I would expect to see a lot more of it coming out as we get closer to the election, because as we're talking about I'm, misinformation, I'm very campaigns. much looking forward to the Jerry Springer <laughs> episode where it's like man says deep fake got woman pregnant. And he's not the father. <laughs> I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Snapchat filters are uh, public enemy of the state number one. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's the beginning of the deep fakes. Luckily, All right. they're only I don't know, like silly looking right now. For now, for now. But that's all the time we got, folks. Again, one more time. Uh, our next show is our last show here on CNET proper. If you want to catch us starting on July 1st and beyond, you can go to tiny.cc slash daily charge. It's going to be the same show, same folks, same time, doing the same thing. They just wanted to give us our own channel because apparently we're awesome. Uh, and we think you're awesome, too, and we want to see you over on that channel with us. It's still here on YouTube. We're still going to be streaming to Periscope as well. Hopefully some other new stuff coming down the pipeline. Uh, exciting, creative new things. We're trying to make the show better and more entertaining and more creative and include you guys more there's going to be more audience involvement so stay tuned for that we don't have a timeline for you we're just working on it as always i'm behind the scenes here trying to make things every day better polish more cool and that, that was not a sentence but anyways thank you for joining us again we'll see you tomorrow for our final show here on cnet proper and then we'll see you over on the new channel but uh ben take us on out all right is the thing up Ah, the thing's not up. The 359 is available on iTunes, FeedBurner, Google Play Music, Google Podcast, Amazon Echo. I may have missed one. Tune in, Stitcher. Tune in, Stitcher. Not Stitcher anymore. Oh, anyway, right. ncnet.com. Thanks, everybody, for your questions. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.